Hi ladies and gentlemen, um, I was debating on whether I should record this video or not, but I feel it's something that needs to be addressed to you all. We are in the last days and um, as you can see Ezekiel 38 and 39 is unfolding. And I have a lot of people coming to me saying um, that they don't believe these are the last days or Jesus Christ has not made his appearance. Um, some others are, are even saying uh, Jesus Christ should have been here by now. Now, as I specifically told you people, nobody knows the day nor the hour when the Lord is coming. And you can't rush the Lord. We have to wait on Him. Jesus is still coming. So you don't want to be the five virgins that were left behind when they weren't prepared. In the parables of the ten virgins. Jesus Christ is coming. Many unusual things are happening now that have never been recorded before in history. The dying off of the animals, which is Hosea prophecy, animal scientists can't explain, and I can tell you right now that that's Bible prophecy. Um, people are not... watching when the Lord instructed us as believers and watchmen on the wall we need to watch for his arrival we need to watch for the coming of the son of man and a lot of people are not doing that when you don't do that you run the risk that you will be the five virgins left behind now I can't tell you you know that there are times when I get tired of waking up here and being on this earth. I don't know if I'm going to make it in the rapture, but I know that I want to do everything that I possibly can to live wholly unto the Lord Jesus Christ and live a life that is pleasing to Him, pleasing to the Father. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I don't get tired, that I'm tired of being here on this earth. I want to go home. Of course, I have my moments, ladies and gentlemen, but Still, it doesn't negate the fact that I have to watch for the Lord and I have to wait on the Father. Okay? It doesn't it doesn't yeah. negate that fact that I need to wait on Jesus Christ. I love you. Okay? And so do you as believers. I feel like a lot of people are getting more worried about what's going on because they're afraid to face it. You have to consider the possibility that you might have to die for Jesus. The Lord said in the word that when you are living a life that is truly holy to the Most High God, you are going to be persecuted because the prophets of old, the righteous ones, went through persecution and they even became martyrs for Christ. With the exception of John, John was the only disciple that lived his life out. John was the only disciple that lived his life out. God showed him and had used him as a vessel to write the book of Revelation. Don't be fooled into thinking that these are not the last days because, ladies and gentlemen, they are. Ezekiel 38 and 39 is unfolding right now as we speak. People are falling away from the faith by the masses. These events were prophesied. They're biblical. You know, I don't, look, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be on this ministry. I know that I was told by the Lord that my time is very short. I'm going to tell you about a dream that I had, okay? And as always, do not trust what I say. Take everything you hear to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. And the Lord will show you for yourself. Cry out to the God of Abraham, Isaiah, uh, Jacob, um, 
and Moses and the prophets of old, the righteous ones, and the God of Israel, which is Jesus Christ, and ask him to show you. I had a dream that it was a short dream, okay? And I'm trying to remember the piece, I'm trying to piece it together for you. I had a dream that I saw black clouds outside, okay? But I saw on YouTube, I'm going to tell you a couple of prophetic dreams. This first one, I saw on YouTube somebody entitled a video, Where is Jesus? And they had where is in lowercase Jesus in capitals with a bunch of exclamation points. And the person that was doing the video was hyperventilating. The person was saying, I don't understand where is Jesus? It seemed like a lot of the tensions, the perplexities in the world escalated, like it says in the Bible. You know, the coming, the, the time of Jesus Christ to arrive grows near. The closer it gets, the more the catastrophes in the world will escalate. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, and so forth. Pestilence, famine. And what happened was, was that this person was hyperventilating, saying... Jesus, where are you? Where are you? You should have been here by now. The person was hyperventilating, crying out for Jesus. Instead of working on their walk, they were crying out for Jesus, expecting Jesus to be here by now, which means that pre-trib rapture believers are going to be making videos like that. When the time gets even more rough, they're going to be making videos like that. I believe in this dream, it was sometime during the tribulation. Either that or before. But the point is, they were expecting the Lord to get them out of here before trials came upon the earth. Because we are seeing trials. Not talking about the tribulation yet, but we're seeing events that are leading up to it. And people were making videos wondering where Jesus was. I had a dream about that. The other thing I had a dream about was I saw Netanyahu in this meeting... It looked like it was a large conference room and there was different representatives from various nations, world leaders. So I have reason to believe it could have been the United Nations. And it was a secret meeting. It was behind the closed doors. Okay? And this man handed it in Yahoo like this decree. It was a it was a a covenant. You know, the Daniel 927 prophecy. And it had it was, it was a thick decree in many pages. Not many, many, but it was a lot. It was a lot of pages. And, and, and Yahweh was looking over the agreement, and then he said to them, excuse me, I can't agree to this. Israel will be no more. He said, Israel has a right to live as a sovereign state. I can't agree to this. Israel is not, Israel's not going to make it. Israel is not going to be no more. So... They looked at him and they said, either you comply or we will force you. And they meant militarily. And they gave Israel a deadline to comply. Now, in that same dream, I saw a newspaper. It was like a headline and it was nighttime. And I saw bombs being dropped on Jerusalem, which means that Israel did not comply with the agreement. And guess what? They're in the UN right now trying to draft a final agreement to force Israel to divide its land. Okay, I'm just letting you know that right now. But in this dream, it was a newspaper article about Israel being invaded and different bombs being dropped on Jerusalem, which means Israel did not comply and will not comply with this draft because Israel is going to be Israel's going to be vulnerable. We know that God's going to restore Israel. Amen. It says it in the scriptures. But Israel's going to be vulnerable if they agree to this agreement. But it's Bible prophecy that is going to happen. So Israel, like I said, I believe Israel didn't agree and was being militarily forced. This goes with the dream that my son had, my oldest son. Marcus said that he had a prophetic dream that he saw Netanyahu crying. And I believe Netanyahu was back in Israel. He was crying and he was calling different world leaders for help. Saying, 
asking to please help, please help. Which basically means, and these, and these nations were turning it back on Israel, which basically means that the agreement happened and it was all said and done. They forced Israel to sign. They said that Israel had to agree or Israel was going to be forced. So Netanyahu was trying to find help. Just like in my dream, like in my dream, he looked upset. In my son's dream, he was crying looking for help because of this agreement that they came out with. So these biblical events, ladies and gentlemen, is going to happen. Don't be fooled into thinking, well, you know, here it is. It's another day. We're, we're all awake. Jesus Christ is not coming. Jesus Christ is coming, ladies and gentlemen. It is prophesied. The Lord promised. He said to his disciples, because they asked him, I think it was in Matthew 24, but you have to look into the book of Matthew. They asked him, when, what are the signs, Rabbi? They said, what are the signs that you will be coming, that it will be the end times? The Lord Jesus told them there will be wars, rumors of wars. There will be earthquakes in diverse places. There will be pestilence and famine. But don't, um, don't let your heart be troubled. Okay? Be of good cheer. Don't let your heart be troubled. If the end is not quite yet, okay. Um, the Lord says that if you that if you when you see when you see the abomination of desolation standing at the holy mount, basically the antichrist declaring himself a god, okay, then you will know that your redemption draweth nigh, meaning that Jesus Christ is at the door, that He's coming. The events in the world are going to get better. You have to think about some of the recent events that just happened. A double eclipse back to back? NASA can't explain that. That's never been ever foretold. These unscheduled blood moons? Never foretold. I told you in, a, in one of my dreams that the Lord told me there was going to be some blood moons that are not even on man's calendar. That's been happening. Um, what about the double rainbows? That's never happened. The blood rivers, the rivers turning blood red. The animal die-offs. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Bible prophecy. God said as believers, we have to watch. Watch for the signs. Just watch. Don't look for signs. Watch. Watch and be prepared because the Son of Man is coming any day. You don't know when He's coming, but to be ready at all times. But He is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I can promise you that. He's coming. He's coming. I've seen Jesus Christ myself, my own house, the Lord appeared to me. And he said to warn you people that he's coming. He said to warn you, and I'm doing just that. I'm telling you people that Jesus is coming, don't be fooled, don't be deceived. The Bible says that um, false prophets and false Christ will perform lying signs of wonders if possible, even to deceive the very elect of God. Don't be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Stay alert. Stay awake. Stay grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Father is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Take comfort in these words. I think it says in 2 Thessalonians. Comfort each other. Okay? Encourage each other. Correct and love. And know that the Son of Man is coming. And that no man knows the day nor the hour. But in that moment, you'll be changed. God's elect will be changed. In the twinkling of an eye, of the twinkling of an eye, you'll be changed and glorified. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when God is on, um, God comes back, and let's know it again, no man knows there the hour, you'll be glorified. Okay? You'll be changed instantly. Take comfort in those words. The tree is almost ripe. The tree represents Jesus Christ. The tree is almost tender, meaning that the Lord is near. Look at what's going on around you. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled like never before. You've got, you know, Russia, Iran, China fighting in Syria. You also got France and the UK that joined. I mean, you got the United States there. The United States is pretty much being bullied by Russia. I mean, you got so much stuff going on, ladies and gentlemen. Ezekiel 38 and 39, the chess pieces are being moved into position, so to speak. Look, y'all. God help us all, okay? Times is getting bad. They're getting rough. They're going to get worse. But God will guide his righteous. 
Remember God said in the Bible, think about Joseph in the book of Genesis. The Lord told him first, look, a famine's coming. You got seven years to get ready. So Joseph spent seven years saving up grain in the barn to get ready for that famine. Seven years because there was seven years of plentiful food and then there was going to be seven years of famine. That's when Joseph had that dream. I think he had the dream about two cattle. One cow, I believe, was plump. The other one was uh, starving. Starving meant, represented seven years of famine. The other one, the plump one, represented seven years of plentiful food. So God was warning him to get ready. So just as God warned Joseph about getting ready for, for the seven years of famine and helping him prepare, God is going to warn his righteous in advance to get ready. When times start to get rough, he is going to warn you. You're going to know what to do because Christ is going to guide you. So don't be afraid. I'm getting so many emails and so many you know, messages on Facebook of people saying that they're afraid and, and, and you know, they're looking and they're seeing by all the stuff happening to Christians worldwide. God prophesied that Christians will be persecuted and they will be martyrs for the cross. It was prophesied. So we can't be afraid or be offended to be persecuted or possibly die for the cross. We must rejoice. Amen. Rejoice in our persecution for our rewards are great in heaven. God says to rejoice for ye are blessed okay rejoice that if you're being persecuted for the cross you're doing something right for God if you're being persecuted and you're righteous I mean not counterfeit persecution you being persecuted not to go out and look for persecution meaning you be persecuted where you're at rejoice don't be afraid of what's to come it's going to get rough. You have to trust God to prepare you. This is a response to these emails that I'm getting. Trust Jesus to prepare you and show you the way and direct your footprints, direct your path. It's not good, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on out there? It's crazy, but it's Bible prophecy. There's war going on. They're not telling the public so many things. Like the stock market did crash. Did you know that? Don't you think it's weird that the stock market was down 1,000 points and all of a sudden it's up a couple hundred points the next day? That makes no sense. You have to really have the sermon to see that. The stock market already crashed. You have bankers committing suicide left and right. They're not committing suicide just for the heck of it or being murdered. They're committing suicide. That's true. But they're committing suicide because they they lost everything, their fortune, because of the market the way it is. It's very volatile. They're not telling you the truth about the job numbers. More than half of the population of the United States are out of work. Target's laying off. Walmart's laying off. You have to do the homework. Stop listening to mainstream media news because they're not telling you everything. The only stupid broadcast they have is about a malfunction with Taylor Swift's makeup. Who cares? The girl looks like Casper the Ghost. Not any amount of makeup is going to do any justice for her. Because she's not righteous anyway. So you can get offended at my comment. That's up to you. Okay? But I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. Because she's Illuminati to the core. Do the research. I'm not going to get into that in this, in this broadcast. I'm just telling you people, you people need to wake up and stop putting your head in the sand, so to speak. Get the veil and the scale out of your eyes and wake up because Jesus is coming. Like I told y'all, y'all don't want to be the five virgins that get left behind. That's your choice to make. That's not my choice. I'm working on my walk with the, with the most high. I plan on making it in that rapture. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to be left behind here. I want the Lord to say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant, when I'm standing before the Most High. That's why I'm warning y'all. Y'all either need to get your act together. It's not for all of you. It's a lot of you, though. You need to get your act together and be right with God and wake up. 
or, or serve Satan. It's as simple as that. That's the choice. There's no in between. You have to live holy for God because he's coming for a spotless bride. Not a bride with stain. Stained garments full of sin. He's not coming for that. So you have a choice to make. Wake up because yes, Jesus is coming. He does not delay or tarry or break his promises. The Father is coming. If you get left behind, don't say I didn't warn you. 